Hello, uh, here we're going to talk about the musculoskeletal system. So I'm going to start with an, a broad overview and first we're going to look at the functions of the musculoskeletal system. It is actually quite important uh, in mineral homeostasis in terms of calcium and phosphate. So certain diseases that affect the musculoskeletal system will actually affect the serum levels of these uh, minerals. In addition, uh, it also houses the hematopoietic elements in the bone marrow. So, of course, uh, sometimes uh, widespread bony disease can also affect hematopoiesis uh, and give rise to things like anemia. In addition, uh, perhaps the most uh, obvious function is mechanical. It provides support, it enables movement as well as locomotion, moving from one place to another, and it also uh, provides the body shape as well as the size of individuals and lastly it helps to protect the viscera by having a hard bony cage around it. Now let's start to focus on diseases of the musculoskeletal system and as always we will want to divide them into two big categories and in this instance diseases of the bones and diseases of the joints. So um, on the left, I'm just going to write out some of the main disease categories or the etiologic categories. And of course, I've run through this mnemonic vitamin C and D with you before, but we're just going to focus on four main categories. The first is inflammatory. And this mainly affects the joints as conditions such as osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and crystal-related arthropathies. So this is where there is crystal deposition within the joint spaces or the joint tissues. And the next uh, category is infection. Infection involves both the bones and joints. It is called osteomyelitis in the bones and septic arthritis in the joints. And this is often caused most frequently by bacterial organisms. The next category is metabolic diseases and metabolic diseases most often or most frequently affect the bones. So there are four main metabolic conditions that we'll be talking about which are covered in your lectures. Osteoporosis which is extremely common, a decrease in bone mass. Osteomalacia which is decrease in bone mineralization, a little bit different from osteoporosis. Hyperparathyroidism which is excessive uh, bone resorption and then Paget's disease which is, which is essentially uncoordinated resorption as well as bone formation. And the last category is neoplastic. And for this, we mainly are talking also about the bones. So you can see that most of the conditions here fall under the category of bony diseases. When it comes to neoplasia, it's again a very, very familiar classification, benign tumors versus malignant tumors. And secondary malignant tumors are very important in the bone because they are one of the catchment areas for metastatic carcinoma, for example, uh, metastatic prosthetic carcinoma, etc. So again, when we're talking about primary, either benign or malignant bone neoplasms, it's good to again subclassify them into bone producing or bone forming, cartilage forming tumors and other types of tumors. So again, just to recap, joints, mainly inflammatory conditions, um, bones, metabolic and neoplastic conditions, and then infections can be seen in either. Now, uh, before moving on to looking specifically at bones and joints, um, it is important to take note of some basic principles or points to note with regards to the musculoskeletal system. Of course, the first thing that you want to look at is, is the condition involving bones or joints or both, such as infection from one spreading to the other. Age and epidemiology um, are extremely important. So different, even inflammatory conditions affect patients of different ages. And certainly for neoplasms, children, young adults and uh, mature adults uh, all have different types of tumours. So that's very important, very similar to what we see in the central nervous system. Now the third point that is also extremely important is the distribution of pathology, whether it's bones or joints. Is it involving the axial skeleton such as the spine, the pelvis, the skull, or is it involving the peripheral skeleton? Um, another point, another parameter to look at distribution is, is it a single site, monoarticular, meaning one joint space, and monoostotic means uh, one bone, or polyarticular or polyostotic, many joint spaces or many bones. And this again helps a lot to tease out the differential diagnosis. 
Another point for distribution is which specific part of the bone is involved. And this is especially important in bony neoplasms. Uh, primary bone tumors, some of them involve the epiphysis, some involve the metaphysis, and some involve the diaphysis. And this is actually extremely helpful if you know um, the location. For example, giant cell tumors tend to involve the epiphysis. Osteosarcoma likes to stick to the metaphysis, and Ewing sarcoma likes to involve the diaphysis. The next point is the presence of any underlying systemic disease. Uh, certain conditions such as uh, SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus, um, can actually give rise to arthritis or bony manifestations. And also another important point is the history of malignancy because as you recall, I did mention that secondary malignancies are not uncommon at all in the skeleton. So we would have to know whether there was any history of carcinoma, for example. And the next point is the imaging. Imaging is of utmost importance when we are talking about the musculoskeletal system because that is generally uh, the go-to investigation in terms of actually looking at bones and joints. So as you run through individual conditions, do also pay attention to the findings that you will see on imaging. And these will be highlighted in your notes as well as in the textbooks. It is a way of actually looking at gross pathology in the live patient.